Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about the hidden part of your Newtone intercom system. The part that you don't see very much of, but it's an integral and important part of your system. It's intercom cable. So what is intercom cable? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to get our terminology down correctly. It's not intercom wire, it's intercom cable. This is a piece of wire. It's a single strand of insulated wire, but it's just a piece of wire. Anytime you have more than one piece of wire together in some fashion, it becomes a cable. So this is a piece of wire as compared to this, which is a piece of intercom cable. This is a piece of Newtone IW2, which is typically used as door speaker wire. It'll have a gray wire and a white wire, and it's a twisted pair wire where the gray and white wires are twisted together to hold them into a cable length. Not only is it easier to install, but it's an integral part of the intercom system circuitry the wire in an intercom system is an important part of the system. In some respects, it's the largest part of any intercom system if you added up the total amount of wire that's in any given system. So this is a two-conductor cable of IW2 compared to this, which is a piece of Newtone IW3 intercom cable. And Inter IW3 intercom cable is a flat parallel cable. So you have three conductors and they're bonded together in a parallel fashion. It's a flat thin cable and this is also integral to Newtone three conductor systems that the wires remain parallel to each other throughout the run. When you install this type of cable it doesn't matter what you do to it. You can take it and twist it and turn it and knot it around something, but the wires remain parallel to each other. So this is Newtone IW3. Here we have Newtone IW6. And IW6 is a six conductor cable, and what you have inside the ivory jacket are six individual strands, and these are colored as orange, orange-white, red, red-white, black, black-white, and the reason they put the white dash on one of each of the wires in the cable is to help you index it when you connect it up so you know at one screw you're connecting the orange wire but the other screw is always orange-white. Inside the IW6 cable you have the six conductors but the six conductors are twisted into pairs. IW6 is twisted pair cable. You have three different twisted pairs, just like you had in the IW2, although they're smaller because the insulation is thinner. And one of the special things about Newtone IW6 is the number of twists in each pair, the twists per inch, varies between each pair. And that's also an integral part of the design of Newtone intercom systems that use six conductor wire. One of the other types of wire what you'll find on older systems is this is Newtone IW8. IW8 isn't used anymore. In fact, IW6 isn't used anymore. IW8 is the same as IW6 except there's an additional pair. So you have two, four, six, eight conductors twisted into four pairs. The fourth pair is a blue with, with a blue-white stripe and these were used primarily on older intercom systems so you don't see a lot of this unless you have an older system and then finally we have this is sort of a unique Newtone cable this is IW6R R stands for ribbon wire and you'll see that this looks a lot like an expanded or larger version than our IW3. Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, why do I care about my intercom cable? Well, intercom cables can create problems with intercom systems and how they operate. It's a misconception that intercom cables get old. When people tell me, oh, I have an old system and I have old wiring, it always makes me think of my grandmother. My grandmother lived in a really old house, and every time the lights would flicker, 
or something would happen that had to do with the electricity, she would always say, oh, well, you know, it's an old house and the wires are old and they just don't work right because they're old anymore. And that's not necessarily the case. If you were to take a piece of IW2 and install it in someone's attic and left it there for 60 or 70 years and no one ever touched it, it would be perfectly fine. Copper wire lasts almost forever. Usually what happens to wire is something that's done by someone or something to the wire after it was installed. The common problems you see with wires that insta are installed in homes are sometimes related to how the wire was held in place when it was installed. Installations that use things like staples out of staple guns can be a problem because staple gun staples are sharp, have sharp edges and if they are stapled to the wire too tightly over time it'll wear through the insulation and cause a short. Oftentimes installers will use these these are metal staples that are really meant to be used to hold heavy gauge electrical wires throughout a house. They're often referred to as Romex staples. And again, Romex staples are heavy. Although the part that typically holds the wire has rounded corners, so it's not particularly sharp, when guys drive these in with their hammers, they drive them in too tight and they'll pinch the wire and that can cause it to rub through the insulation. And the other thing that happens is Sometimes you'll have people that go up in the attic, you'll have workers or people store things in their attic and they'll step on the wire where it goes over a ceiling joist or some other framing in the house and with years and years of stepping on the wire and bending it, that can cause problems. The other thing that happens, which is probably the number one cause of problems, is animals. And here we have a mouse. Well. It's not really a mouse, it's a hedgehog, but I couldn't find a mouse. Anyway, uh, mice like to chew on the intercom insulation. They like the, the insulation on the wires and they chew on the insulation and eat it and take it away. And then you have bare copper left. We'll send the mouse home now. And then you have bare exposed copper wire and eventually the wires will touch and cause a short and your system won't work properly. So those are the kind of things that happen to wires in people's houses. If the wire was left on its own and no one ever touched it and nothing ever messed with it, it would probably last forever. So here on the whiteboard, we have a drawn representation of Newtone IW2 cable. You'll see that you have an orange wire that will represent the white wire and the brown will represent the gray wire in your Newtone IW2 cable. IW2 cable on Newtone intercom systems is most often used to connect the front door speaker to the door speaker terminals on the terminal board behind the master station, just like this. If over time something happens to the wire and you get a break in one of the wires, like that, your door speaker will stop working. Let's fix the break. And let's say that a mouse comes along and chews on the wire and the mouse causes a short in the wire right here. You have a short in the wire somewhere between the master station and the door speaker, the door speaker is not going to work either. And in fact, sometimes it'll cause a problem with the entire system because you have a short circuit in one of the cables. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to check the wire and make a determination as to what the problem is. And that way you might have a chance of solving it. So to check the wire, you'll need a tool to check the wire and your tool is usually a digital multimeter of some type. This is my digital multimeter. This is a Fluke Model 83. I bought this in 1990 and it was very expensive. I've used it every single day since I bought it. I've only ever had to have it repaired once, which is pretty good. The thing about 
multimeters are, they're readily available nowadays. You can go down to almost any good hardware store or you can go to Amazon or other online sellers and buy multimeters. I don't recommend that you go down to your local Harbor Freight store and buy a $10 multimeter. The whole point of having test tools or tools in general is when you're using them, you have to be able to trust what they tell you. If you buy a $10 multimeter, it may not function very well and you'll find that you'll waste a lot of time trying to figure out what's wrong with your intercom cable and it may not do a good job. This multimeter, if you bought a modern one like this today, it would probably cost you close to $400. You can certainly buy a very nice multimeter, maybe an X-Tech brand, which is a nice reasonably priced brand on Amazon for anywhere from $40 to $65. It's money well spent. So, how do you use the multimeter? Multimeters have a variety of different ranges and functions that they will operate at. They'll measure AC voltage, DC voltage, current, resistance. And one of the things that you need in a multimeter that you're going to use to test and measure wires with is one that has a continuity setting. Continuity measures the connection between things. And Fluke milk multimeters, when you set it on the continuity setting, you can turn the beeper on, and when we install the probes, and the probes make close a connection, it will beep to tell you that there's a connection there. So you'll need a multimeter of some type to do it, and it has to have a continuity setting. So in our example, we suspect that we have a problem with our Newtone IWT cable that connects between the master station and the front door speaker cone. And we want to test the IW2 cable to see if there is a problem and see if we can figure out what the problem is. So the first thing that we need to do is we have to disconnect the IW2 wire from the devices at each end. We're going to disconnect it from the terminal board at the master station and we're going to disconnect it from the speaker cone at the front door speaker. We're testing the cable. We're not testing the speaker cone and we're not testing anything at the master station. We want to test just the cable. So the cable needs to be all on its own. When the cable has been disconnected from each end, that's when you get your multimeter. And on your multimeter, you're going to have leads that come off of it. The black is usually the common and the red is usually the voltage or other function cable. And we're going to set the multimeter to its continuity setting. And this shows that the beep tone will be on. It doesn't really matter what the numbers on the readout are going to say. Uh, that's for more advanced testing. Right now, when you use the continuity beeper, it's really a go or no-go kind of tool. So it's going to tell you, yes, there's continuity, or no, there's not, but not a lot of detail. Detail is for later. So how do we proceed from here? All right, so to test the continuity of the wire, you have to remember your digital multimeter is set in the continuity position, and the beeper is turned on. You have your test leads plugged in, and if for a moment you were to touch the two test leads together, the multimeter will beep. So what we want to do is, and the beeping, what the beeping tells you is that it's made a full connection from one lead to the other lead and back to the multimeter. That's continuity. The, the, you have a continuity of circuit between, throughout the leads back to the multimeter. If you connect the black lead to the white wire and the red lead to the gray wire, and this end, these ends of the wires are not touching, not connected together, you have no continuity. The, the electricity from the meter travels through the purple wire or the white wire here, and it stops because it's, it can't jump across, it's not connected to the gray wire, so it doesn't go back to the red lead. So you have no continuity. It doesn't matter which lead you put on which wire. You can do black to white and red to gray, or you can reverse it and go black to gray and red to white. It doesn't make any difference. It's just checking for continuity. 
So the first thing you want to do when you're checking your wire is you're looking for continuity. So if you connect your probes at this end like this, and this end the wires are still open, you have no continuity. If you connect these two ends together, like this, you've now completed the circuit. The voltage will flow from the meter through the white wire, through the area where you twisted the white wire to the gray wire, back down the gray wire, up the red probe to the meter, and guess what? It beeps. And that's good. That shows that the wire is intact. There's no breaks in the wire anywhere. If you had a break in the wire, let's say our friend uh, Hedgehog came back and he chewed on the wire right here, you have a break in the wire, you lose your continuity, and the multimeter won't beep. A break in the wire here is the same as a break in the wire here where the ends aren't connected together. Or, draw that back in. We've repaired the break there, but now he's made a break there. Anywhere there's a break in the wire or in the cable, it, it, you lose your continuity and the multimeter won't beep. So if you, when you connect your probes, you connect the other ends of the IW2 cable and you get a beep, that means you have continuity and chances are the wire is good. Now, let's say in another example that you need to test your IW2 cable you get your multimeter set up on continuity with the beeper enabled and you connect your black lead to the white wire and your red lead to the gray wire and as soon as you connect the red wire the multimeter beeps but you haven't twisted together the other ends of the IW2 cable yet these ends are still open what does that mean? Well, that means that somewhere in your IW2 cable you have a short and, so, and the wire, the, the white wire and the gray wires are touching together somewhere in the length of the cable. Could be a place where Mr. Hedgehog chewed on the insulation and you have bare wires and they're touching each other. And that's a real problem because you can't have a short circuit in the cable. It has to be unbroken and have proper continuity for the door speaker to work. So if you have this type of problem, that means that you either have to crawl through your attic or under your house and see if you can find the wire and find where the short is. In most cases, that's not a very practical thing to do. So the easiest thing to do is to rerun the wire if that's possible. So that's how you check for continuity on an IW2 cable and also how you check for shorts. Now let's build on that and see what happens when you have a more complicated cable. In our next example, we're going to talk about Newtone IW3 cable. This is a very common cable, and again, it's a flat three conductor parallel cable with three wires inside the cable. So here's our representation of our Newtone IW3 cable. IW3 cable is always labeled in this way. You have one, one wire in the cable that represents the red or silver wire, you have the center wire, which is obviously the center wire because it's between the two outer wires. And you'll have the third wire, which is always labeled as blue or copper. Some IW3 cable, the earlier cable, the insulation will be all gray. On later IW3 cable, one edge will have a blue stripe on the insulation. And even in later IW3 cable, one edge will have a blue stripe and one edge will have a red stripe. Where does the silver and copper come in? In the old days, when you strip off the insulation from the IW3, the actual metal copper wire inside the insulation, one wire will be coated and will be silver colored. The third one will be bare copper. And again, by default, the center one is always in the center. So that's easy. So how's IW3 used? Well, in a Newtone three conductor system, at the master station, you'll have a terminal board arrangement of some type, depending on what type of system you have. 
and the red wire will be attached to the screw that's marked as red or silver. The center wire will be, will be connected to the center terminal and the blue wire will be connected to the blue or copper terminal. This is the master station. This is the board behind your remote station in the house and there's a variety of different ways this is done. You would also typically have a speaker cone on the station and there'll be wires that connect the terminal board to the speaker cone but again it's just like at the master station the red wire is connected to the red screw and the center wire is connected to the center screw and finally the blue wire is connected to the blue or copper screw and that's how a three conductor system is typically wired up. So let's say once again that we suspect that we have a problem with one of the IW3 cables on our three wire Newtone intercom system and we want to check the wire to see if there's a problem with it. So just like we did on the IW2 cable, the first thing we need to do is we need to disconnect the wire at each end. So we're going to disconnect it from the master station terminal board and we're going to disconnect it from the room speaker because again we're not testing the room speaker and we're not testing the master station we're just testing the cable so in fact since we've disconnected the remote speaker we're going to take it all, all the way away so we have a little bit more room now we have a slightly different situation on the IW2 cable we had two conductors in the cable and the IW3 cable, we have three conductors in the cable. And you might think, oh no, that's too difficult, what am I going to do? Well, if you look at it from a one point of view, it's very simply, if you eliminated the blue wire for a moment, you're down to two conductors, which is the same as the IW2. If you disconnect or eliminate the red wire for a second, you have a different pair down here. So it's very similar to checking this. You're going to take your multimeter and you're going to start by connecting the black lead to the red. And then you're going to connect the red lead to the center. And we'll just leave the blue one off on its own for right now. We won't worry about that yet. And just like we did on the IW2 cable, we need to connect this end of the cable because we want to check for continuity. Now, as we found out with the IW2 cable, where we had a short in the cable, if you connect your probes from the multimeter up to the red and center wire and immediately it beeps, you know that somewhere you have a short in the cable. And that's not good. But let's assume for right now that it doesn't beep. So we'll take our short away and we'll repair our wire for a moment. And I think we nicked the blue one there just a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to connect the red and the center wire together just like we did on the IW2. We're going to twist the ends together and we've completed the circuit through the red and center wire and if there's no breaks in the wire, the multimeter will beep. Now we know that the red and center wire is good. The next step is to check the center and blue wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our probe from the multimeter off the red wire. And we're going to move it over. And this means we're not connecting, we're jumping over. And we connect it to the blue wire. Once again, so now we're testing the blue and the center wire, just like we did in the last step. If for some reason it beeps before you've connected this end of the center and blue, it means you have a short somewhere. And again, that's not good. So let's remove our short and fix our wires. And we're going to untwist this end, 
the red and the center. And now we're going to make a connection between the center and the blue. So a quick recap. So far we've tested red and center and that's done. And we've tested blue and center and that's done. But on a three conductor cable you have one more combination that needs to be tested. You have red and blue because those are the complete number of combinations that you can create out of a three conductor cable. So just like we did before, we're going to connect our red lead to the blue wire and we're going to connect our black lead to our red wire and once again if you have an immediate beep before you've connected the red and blue wires together at this end of the cable it means you have a short. And shorts on IW3 cable, if you look at the actual cable itself, shorts are actually most commonly between the outside wires in the cable, what would be the blue and the red. Why is that? Well, if you're, if you're holding it in place with staple gun staples, that's where the outside edges are most exposed or if you're using Romex staples it's where it may be driven too tight and be pinched but the outside conductors are more exposed than the center one is and that's why it may become damaged more often. So once you've connected here if you don't have a beep you probably don't have a short but then you still need to connect the red and the blue together to complete the circuit and the meter should beep and you know that the red and the blue wires are good in that combination also. The biggest problem with IW3 cable will be shorts more than brakes. So this is how you do that. So now we've completed the red and the blue. So let's go on to the next type of cable. So now let's look at our new tone IW6 cable. And as we talked about earlier, IW6 is a six conductor cable. There are three pairs in the cable and they're represented here on the board. For this drawing, the red and red white, anything with a white indexing mark will be a green line. So we have red, red, white, black, black, white, orange, orange, white, just like the real Newtone IW6 cable. Testing this is the same, and you'll notice that if we eliminate the bottom two for a second, this looks just like this, only it's a different color. So guess what? Testing it is exactly the same. You do the same steps as you did with the Newtone IW2. You connect one test probe to the red, you connect the other test probe to the red with a white stripe. There should be no beep. If there is a beep at this point, you have a short in the cable somewhere. Then you connect the two empty ends or the two disconnected ends at the other end of the cable, connect them together. You complete the circuit and the meter should beep showing that the wire is good. You repeat that for this pair, this pair, and this pair, but you're not done yet. If you were doing IW3 cable, if you remember, there were three combinations. On IW6 cable, there's a lot more combinations. So you have to check every possible combination. So this will make a lot more sense if we actually do this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna strip off the insulation off our individual wires inside the cable. We'll make it more true to life. So now, this is what your cable will look like when you're actually ready to test it. You have your six conductors, you've stripped off the insulation off the end of each wire so you can get to the copper, and you're going to use your test probes. Now this is a little hard to do with one hand, but you to check every possible combination, you would do black probe and red probe and do that pair and then do the same on the red pair and the same on the black pair. But then you have to check all the possible combinations. And the way you do this in real life is 
you keep the black probe on the orange white. You go here, and then here, and here, and here, and here, and then you move it to the orange wire, and you repeat red, white, red, black, black, white, and then you move it to the red, white, and do red, black, black, white, and then to the red, and black, and black, white, and then you're down to black and black, white. That's how you do every possible combination. If you do it in that order, and you do it every single time, you won't miss any of the possible combinations. So that's what there is about checking IW6 wire. You have to remember that when you do this, as you check each pair, you have to connect the ends together. So you have continuity through the circuit to see if the wire is good. One of the things that happens on Newtone IW6, sometimes you'll have shorts between pairs. So we'll disconnect our ends and we'll fix our wires just a little bit. Let's say that you're testing here and without the ends closed, there's no beep, so there's no short. But when you move your red probe down to the black wire, all of a sudden there's a beep. Well, that's a problem because that means there's a short between the red, white, and the black wire. So one additional check you have to do is you have to check between sh for shorts between the enti inside the entire cable. So how do you check for shorts between all the cables? We're going to use a real test probe because it'll be easier to show. Off your multimeter, you connect the black wire to any one of the individual wires inside the cable. You leave the other ends of the cable all disconnected, not twisted together, just open ends. And you simply touch the red, there should be no beep. You touch the black white, there should be no beep. You touch the black, there should be no beep. You touch the orange white, no beep. And the orange, no beep. That tells you that there's no shorts between the red white and any of the other five wires. But what about the red to the black white or the red to the orange? Well, then what you have to do is move your black probe to the red and you repeat. And after you do that, you move your black probe to the black white and then you repeat again. So each time you move the black probe, there's fewer and fewer wires to check. That's the fundamentals of checking wires in your Newtone intercom cables. I probably made this more complicated than it needed to be, but I tried to be thorough. The best thing that you can do is go out and get yourself a reasonably priced multimeter with continuity and a beeper. Take some scrap wire that you have lying around. It's been pointed out to me in the past that not everybody has scrap wire laying around, which I find hard to understand. But if you don't, buy a little piece at the hardware store and play around with it. Start with some two conductor and play around with your new multimeter and your wire and this will make more sense. This is a practical thing to learn how to do. And once you master the two conductor, you can move on to multi-conductor cable and it'll start to make more sense to you. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please give it a like or a thumbs up on YouTube. If you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, it will raise our YouTube search results and more people will find our videos so we can help them with their Newtone intercom system problems. Watch for more fundamental videos about Newtone intercom systems. I'm going to create a playlist just for the fundamental videos so you can learn more about the basics of systems and hopefully that will help people. And I'll see you on the next video.